Okay, the hazardous materials tables 9.4 shows part of the hazardous materials table. Column 1 tells which shipping modes, the entry, effects, and other information concerning the shipping description. The next five columns show each material shipping name, hazard class, or group or division, identification number, packaging group, and required labels. Six different symbols may appear in column one of the table. The plus sign shows the proper shipping name, hazard class, and packaging group to use, even if the material doesn't meet the hazard class definition. The letter A means the hazard material described in column two is subject to HMR only when offered and intended for transport by air unless it is a hazardous substance or hazardous waste. W means the hazardous material described in column two is subject to HMR only when offered or intended for transportation by water, unless it is a hazardous substance, hazardous waste, or marine pollutant. The letter D, as in dog, means that the proper shipping name is appropriate for describing materials for domestic transportation and may not be a pro proper for international transportation. The letter I identifies a proper shipping name that is used to describe materials in international transportation. A different shipping name may be used when only domestic transportation is involved. The letter G means that the hazards, hazardous material described in column two is a generic shipping name a generic shipping name must be accompanied by a technical name on a shipping paper. A technical name is a specific chemical that makes the product hazardous. Column two lists the proper shipping names and descriptions of regulator, regulated materials. Entries are in alphabetic order so you can more quickly find the right entry. The table shows the proper shipping names in regular type. The shipper paper must show proper shipping names. Names shown in italics are not proper shipping names. So here we're looking at the hazardous materials table. So A, symbols, hazardous, so that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and the list. A sort of substance. Okay. So those are two tables you probably need to look at, 9.4 and 9.5. Column three, materials hazard class or division or the entry forbidden. Never transport a forbidden material. Placard hazard hazardous material shipped based on quantity and hazard class. You can decide which placard to use if you know these three things materials hazard class amount being shipped amount of all hazardous materials of all classes on your vehicle column four lists the identification number for each proper shipping name identification numbers are preceded by their letter un na or id the letters na are associated with the with proper shipping names that are only used within the United States and to and to and from Canada. The letter ID associated with proper shipping names recognized by International Civilian Aviation Association. Technical instructions for transportation by air. The identification number must appear on the shipping papers as part of the shipping description and also appear on the package. It also must appear on cargo tanks and other bulk packaging. Police and firefighters use the number to quickly identify hazardous materials. Column five, which I guess is that one right there, shows the package group in Roman numerals assigned to a material. Column six, which is, all right, shows the, warn, the hazard warning labels shippers must put on packages of hazardous materials. Some products require use of more than one label due to a multiple hazards being present. Column seven 
list the identical special provisions that apply to this material. When there is an entry in, the, in this column, you must refer to the federal regulations for spec specific information. The numbers one through six in the column means hazardous material is a poisonous inhalant. PIH materials have special requirements for shipping papers, marking, and placards. Column eight is a three-part column showing the section number converting the package requirements for each hazardous material. Note, column nine and 10 do not apply to transportation by highway. Appendix A to 49 CFR 172.101 the list of hazardous substances and reportable quantities. The DOT and EPA want to know about spills of hazardous substances. They are named in the list of hazardous substances and reported quantities. See figure 9.5, column two of the list shows each product's reportable quantity, which is abbreviated as RQ. When these materials are being transported in reportable quantities of greater in one package, the shipper displays the letters RQ on the shipping papers and package. The letter RQ may appear before or after the basic description. You or your employer must report any spills of these materials with which occur in a reportable quantity. In the words inhalation, if the words inhalation hazard appear on shipping papers or package, the rules require display of poisonous inhalation hazard or poison gas placards as appropriate. These placards must be used in addition to other placards, which may be required by the product's hazard class. Always display the hazard class placard and the poison inhalation hazard placard, even for small amounts. Appendix B to 49 CFR 172.101 list of marine pollutants. Appendix B is a list of chemicals that are that are toxic to marine life. For highway transportation, transportation, this list is only used for chemicals in a similar container with a capacity of 119 gallons or more without a placard <coughs> or label as a specific specified by the HMR. Any bulk packages of a marine pollutant must display the marine pollutant markings, white triangle with a fish and an X through the fish. This marking is not a placard, must, must also be displayed on the outside of the vehicle. In addition, a notation must be made on the Okay, I think I, we left off on the shipping papers. The shipping papers shown in 9.6 describe a shipment. A shipping paper for hazardous material must include page numbers if the shipping paper has more than one page. The first page must tell the total number of pages. For example, page one of four. A proper shipping description for each hazardous material. A shipping certification signed by or, yeah signed by the shipper saying they prepared the shipment according to the regulations and there is your example the item description if a shipper the item description if a shipper pa paper describes both hazards and non-hazardous products the hazardous materials must be entered first, highlighted in, con in a contrast color, or identified by an X placed before the shipping description. ID number, shipping name, hazard class, package group. If a column captioned HM, if a column captured H HM, the letters RQ may be used instead of X if a reportable quantity needs to be identified. The basic description of hazardous materials includes the identification number, proper shipping name, hazardous class or division, and the package group, if any, in that order. The packaging group is displayed in Roman numerals and may, may be preceded by PG. 
identification number, shipping name, and hazardous class must not be abbreviated unless specifically authorized in hazardous materials regulations. The description must also show the total quantity of unit of measured, the number and type of packages, the letters RQ if reported quote, quantity. If the letters RQ appear, the name of the hazardous substance, if not included in the shipping name. For all materials with the letter G, generic, in column one, the technical name of, haz of the hazardous material. Shipping papers also must list an emergency response telephone number unless expected. The emergency response telephone number is the responsibility of the shipper. It can be used by emergency responders to obtain information about any hazardous material involved in a spill or fire. The telephone number must be the number of the person offering the hazardous material for transportation if the shipper offered is the emergency response information provider or the number of the agency or organization capable of and accepting responsibility for providing the detailed information required by paragraph A2 of this section. The person who is registered with the ERI provider must be identified by name or contract number or other unique identif identifier assigned by the ERI provider on the shipping paper. Shippers also must provide emergency response information to the motor carrier for each hazardous material being shipped. The emergency response information must be able to be used away from the motor vehicle and provide information on how to safely handle increments involved involving the material. At a, min at a minimum, it must include the following information. The basic description of the technical name, immediate hazards, to health, risk of fire or explosion, immediate precautions to be taken in the event of an accident or incident, immediate methods of handling fires, initial methods of handling spills or leaks in the absence of fires, and preliminary first aid measures. Such information can be on the shipper shipping papers or some other document that includes the basic description or technical name of the hazardous material. Or it may be in a guidance book such as Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG. Motor carriers may assign shipping shippers by keeping an ERG on each vehicle carrying hazard materials. The driver must provide the emergency response information to any federal, state, or local author authority responding to a hazardous material incident or investigation, investigating one. Total quantity and numbers, number and type of packages must appear before or after the basic description. The packaging type and the unit of measurement may be abbreviated. For example, 10 CTCS, UN 1263, paint 3, PG2, 500 pounds. The shipper of hazardous waste must put the word waste before the proper shipping name of the material on the shipping paper. Hazardous waste manifest, for example. UN 1090, waste acetone, 3 PG2. A non-hazardous material may not be described by using a hazard class or identification number. Shippers must keep a copy of shipping papers or electronic image for a period of two years, three years for hazardous waste after the material is accepted by the initial carrier. If one provides a carrier service only and is not the originator of the shipment, a carrier is required to keep a copy of the shipping paper or an electronic image for a period of one year. Important note, to view complete regulatory requirements for transportation of hazardous materials, one should refer to the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 49, Parts 171 through 185. Shipping Certificate. When the shipper packages mater hazardous materials, he or she certifies that the package has been properly prepared according to the rules. The signed shipper's certificate certification of appears 
on the original shipping papers. The only exception are when a shipper is a private carrier transporting their own product and when the package is provided by the carrier, for example, a cargo tank. Unless a package is clearly unsafe or does not comply with HMR, you may accept the shipper's certificate concerning proper packaging. Some carriers have additional rules about transporting hazardous materials. Follow your employer's rules when accepting shipments. Package marking and labels. Shipper's print requires markings directly on, on the package. An attached label or tag. An important package marking in the same in the name of the hazardous material. It is same name as the one on the shipping paper. The requirements for marking vary by package size and materials being transported. When required, the shipper will put the following on the package, the name and the address of the shipper or consignee, the hazardous material shipping name and identification number, and the labels required. It is a good idea to compare the shipping paper to the markings and labels. Always be sure that the shipper shows the correct basic description on the shipping paper and verifies that the proper labels are shown on the package. If you are not familiar with the material, ask the shipper to contact your office. If rules require it, the shipper will put RQ, marine pollutant, biohazard, hot, or inhalation hazard on the package. Packages with liquid containers inside will have packages orienting will have package orientation markings with the arrows pointing to which way is an upright direction. The labels used always reflect the hazard class of the product. If a package needs more than one label, the label must be cl close together near the pr proper shipping name.